When you first arrive at the Nuka World Transit Center, you hear a gunner commander giving a speech to her subordinates. No one investigates that signal until this place is secure. If I see anyone violate protocol and enter that transit station before we're set, I'll have your head. Now pick up the pace. I want to be able to report back to Cyprus ASAP. Looks like we're not the only ones who picked up the new Nuka World radio broadcast. What is it that these gunners want? Well, you could try to walk up and ask them like a neighborly fellow, but of course if you do, they attack. This is actually a pretty challenging fight at younger levels. I was only able to succeed with my railroad character by hacking the Assaultron that the gunners brought with them. This Assaultron then wreaked devastation amongst the gunner ranks. The leader of this outfit is Commander Kaler. She was a skull when I met her and she wielded an automatic plasma pistol. After you kill her and you kill the remaining gunners, if you loot her corpse, you find a note called Kaler's Orders on her body. This note is from Colonel Cyprus. This is the same Cyprus that Kaler referred to in her speech. We learn that Colonel Cyprus sent Commander Kaler and these gunners here to investigate the Nuka Cola family radio signal. The reason is because they sent a gunner recon team led by Sergeant Lanier out west in this general direction. They maintained contact with Sergeant Lanier's recon team for a while, but then all of a sudden, Sergeant Lanier stopped responding to their messages. She and her entire team went missing. Kaler's primary objective is to secure this location and then report back to Colonel Cyprus for further instructions. Likely she would then be sent out to go find Sergeant Lanier and her missing recon team. Well, sadly, now that Kaler's dead, it looks like no one's gonna be able to find Sergeant Lanier. But let's head to Nuka World and see if we can pick up the trail. We pick up the trail due east of the Nuka Cola bottling plant. Off in the distance, we see a lone gunner manning her post atop a truck. This is rather strange. Maybe she's a lookout. This was a gunner private. It looks like she's created a little bit of a lookout post for herself here. And if this is a lookout post, then that means that she's reporting back to a primary base. Now we already know that gunners love their overpasses and it just so happens that if you look east, we find a broken overpass. I have a hunch that if we head this way, we may find more gunners. After a short run, sure enough, we find another gunner private. This one was manning a guard station with a red canopy just like the other. Heading towards the overpass, we find a metal shack directly underneath it, and inside, yet another gunner. It looks like we may have found Sergeant Lanier's missing recon team. In true gunner fashion, they've set up an elevator to bring us atop the broken overpass. This is the Brad Burton overpass, and it is indeed the location of Sergeant Lanier's recon team. Or at least, it was. On this overpass, we find a terminal where the gunners have been riding logs. We learn that Sergeant Lanier and her detachment arrived at the Nuka World Transit Station and put a bullet in the Nuka World Raider who was acting as a lure. These gunners didn't fall for the ruse. Instead of taking the monorail right into the arms of the Raiders, they decided to cross the mountains. Lanier says that it was a tough journey and the mountains have gotten in the way of their communication with Gunner HQ. So Colonel Cypress lost contact with Sergeant Lanier's team, not because the team deserted, but only because the mountain range got in the way of their communication signal. Once they arrived in Nuka World, Sergeant Lanier set up this base camp on top of the Brad Burden overpass. It was a strategic location where they can snipe enemies from a distance. Once they set up their camp, they then began to gather intel about the various locations here in Nuka World. One of the gunners named Private Benson told Lanier that there was a trading post in Nuka World called Nuka Town, USA. However, Lanier has since realized that this town has been taken over by raiders. She correctly concluded Includes that this small detachment of gunners is no match for all of the raiders of Nuka World. So instead of fighting them and trying to take over the park, she wants to bring in reinforcements. They discovered the ruined town of Bradburton, but decided to pass it up because it was not only swarming with ghouls, but in Lanier's words, there's a low chance of finding high value salvage. And since we're doing a series on the gunners, this is something to bear in mind. 
One of their primary goals for occupying a place is to find high-value salvage. Lanier then gathered intel on the Kitty Kingdom and decided against trying to take it over, even though she really liked the idea of having her own castle, due to the radioactive mist. They only have a few pieces of power armor, and she says that the potential cost in troops and supplies outweighs the benefits. The most promising find, in Lanier's mind, is the Nuka-Cola bottling plant. Lanier's interested in the bottling plant for two reasons. The first is that if it's a Nuka-Cola bottling plant, then they may be able to literally print bottle caps. We all know that bottle caps are the currency of the wasteland, and maybe they can find a bottle cap printing machine in this factory. And the second is that Intel reports that the Nuka-Cola bottling plant has a bunch of decent pre-war robots that are still active inside. Lanier says that their own supply of robots are dwindling, and so it may be useful to, quote, tag and bag the robots inside the bottling plant. Well, we already know that these gunners love their robots. We've already had to fight two Assaultrons here at the Bradburton Overpass. Lanier also expresses confusion about the entire idea of an amusement park. She says, This Nuka World place is pretty strange. What is this place? I can't imagine a practical use for such a place. She says that it almost looks like a series of forts, but the pre-war gates to each of the parks don't have doors, so she just doesn't get it. However, she does recognize the defensive potential of occupying all of Nuka World. Thus, she's going to be using the Bradburton Overpass as her first toehold into Nuka World, from which she could potentially push the raiders out. But before she can, she's going to need reinforcements. And then we don't hear from Lanier anymore. Instead, we hear from someone named Corporal Tornan. The reason is because Sergeant Lanier decided to lead the recon team to investigate the Nuka-Cola bottling plant. Remember, this was really the only place where she saw any potential. Maybe they could print their own bottle caps, and she wanted to tag and bag the robots in the plant. Now, it's strange that Sergeant Lanier would go herself. She is, after all, in charge of this team. You'd think she'd stay behind and one of the privates asked her about this. Her response was to knock a couple of his teeth out, and then she explained by saying, something about the place just feels hinky. I, mean, I actually had to Google that word, hinky, H-I-N-K-Y. Corporal Tornan didn't know what that word means either, but he was too afraid to ask her what it meant. According to online dictionaries, it means that an object is unreliable, or if referring to people, that those people are dishonest. I don't know, was she saying that she didn't trust her team to take care of the situation without her? I guess that must be what she meant by hinky. Strange choice of words. The final entry in this terminal is again from Corporal Tornan. At this point, Sergeant Lanier and the recon team have been missing for over a week. Corporal Tornan started to see a bunch of strange glowing mire lurks crawling around the bottling plant. He's afraid about what might have happened to Sergeant Lanier, and so he sent a runner to head back to HQ to get more reinforcements. And that's it. So we found the gunner base here at the Bradburton Overpass, but no sign of Sergeant Lanier. Even though Corporal Tornan was supposed to be here, none of the gunners actually had the name Corporal Tornan. They all had generic gunner names. We also found two Assaultrons on this overpass, as well as two gunners wearing power armor. Now the first gunner in power armor is always in her power armor, but the second one actually gets into the suit of power armor, which means that if you kill the gunner before he or she gets into the suit of power armor, you can walk away with a new power armor frame. The suit of power armor that this last gunner gets into is also leveled. In this instance, I found a bunch of X01 pieces, which may be the one and only time that we see gunners using X01 power armor. So it looks like our mission is clear. In order to find Sergeant Lanier, we need to go to the Nuka-Cola bottling plant. Now the Nuka-Cola bottling plant is a fascinating structure with a lot of interesting pre-war history. I touched on this place briefly when I did my video on Project Cobalt, which you can watch here. In that video, I take you into the secret beverageer lab, which was concealed inside the Nuka-Cola bottling plant. This place deserves its own video, so I'm going to save exploring the Nuka-Cola bottling plant for a dedicated video. But in the Nuka-Cola bottling plant, just outside the doors to the secret beverageer lab, we find the remains of Sergeant Lanier's recon team. We don't find any notes or holotapes on any of these corpses. However, there is one holotape that is cut content from the game, called Sergeant Lanier's Holotape. This is Sergeant Lanier, audio log, day one. We've lost contact with Colonel Cypress at HQ. My private tells me the damage to our comms is irreversible. 
so this log will have to do. We've infiltrated a place called Nuka World. It's not in the best of shape, but promising for salvage. We're securing a small camp, and once that's done, I'll be sending out individual teams to the surrounding areas. The first location is the Nuka World bottling plant. The second is Kitty Kingdom. I'm not setting any high hopes for Kitty Kingdom, but this bottling plant could be big. As you can see, it doesn't really tell us anything that we don't already know, which is probably why it was cut from the game. So we don't have any account of their final stand, but I believe there's enough evidence on the stage to tell us exactly what happened. Sergeant Lanier and her recon team successfully managed to get inside the Nuka-Cola bottling plant to look for caps and robots to salvage. They set up some gunner barricades and fortified this room because they got attacked by Nuka Lurks. The Nuka Lurks proved too much for the small team. There were only three members of this recon team. We find the corpse of Sergeant Lanier herself lying behind one of the gunner barricades next to a blasted out terminal and the end of dungeon chest. Lying on the ground next to her on top of sleeping bags are two other gunners. It looks like the gunners were surprised, possibly in the middle of the night, and none of them survived. At least we've solved the mystery and found the missing recon team. The gunners came here looking for robots and caps. They had ambitions for eventually taking over the park, but they needed more reinforcements. Now we actually find more gunners in Nuka World besides Sergeant Lanier and her recon team. We find a few gunner deserters lying dead in the gauntlet, and we even find some gunners by themselves off exploring on their own whom we fight in the Nuka-Cola Cars Arena. I'll be sure to cover them when I talk about deserters and mercenaries in my upcoming video on the gunners. And who is Colonel Cypress? This is the first and only time he's mentioned in the game. He also happens to be the highest ranked gunner officer ever mentioned in the game. Before that, we had Captain Wes at Gunners Plaza and Captain Bridget at the Hub City Auto Wreckers. The only gunner officer rank that could possibly be higher than Colonel would be Brigadier. We fight gunner brigadiers in the game, but we don't know of any named brigadier officers. That makes Colonel Cypress the highest ranking named officer we know of in the game. Corporal Tornan sent a runner back to HQ. Surely he didn't mean Gunners Plaza. Surely he meant wherever Colonel Cypress was. Where is Colonel Cypress? Does this mean that there's some other Gunner HQ just outside the Commonwealth? If so, does that mean that the Gunners are active elsewhere? Maybe their activity in the Commonwealth is rather recent. Maybe they started outside the Commonwealth and moved in. These are all thoughts that we will explore in my upcoming video on the Gunners as a faction. We've explored many places in Vanilla Fallout 4 and now in Nuka World to try to better understand the motives of the Gunners. We'll pull it all together in one epic video, which I will publish soon. If that sounds interesting to you, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell button so that you get notified when I publish that video. We're almost done with our exploration of the Gunners as a faction. Action, so stay tuned. And did you know that I had my own line of Oxhorn t-shirts? That's right, I've got a bunch of t-shirts that are Oxhorn and Fallout 4 themed, some of which include your favorite quotes from your favorite factions. If you'd like to learn more about my shop where I sell the t-shirts, mugs, hoodies, and a bunch of other stuff, check out my Teespring link in the description below. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad that you're watching this video today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.